But before we go into the panelists, I do have a couple of housekeeping items and reminders that I'd like to address with everyone. First, just remember that if you are an audience member, we will have time for Q&A at the end of the show. Um, so if you want to go to the bottom of your screen there, there is a box second beside participants where you can post your questions. So we will have Q&A at the end. Um, so please mute your mics out of respect for our panelists. Um, also would like to remind everyone um, about our town rules. Um, those were flashing on the screen before you, uh, before you logged in, but I do like to cover those very briefly. Um, they include to listen deeply to each panelist, challenge myself, accept each other's reality, allow others a chance to learn what I may already know, own my statements, try to use I, not they, and those people, do not generalize, do no harm, and be aware of judging myself and others too harshly or unfairly, ask compassionate questions, and evaluate my motives for participation. So I do like to share those with you as we enter into this conversation. We want to be able to facilitate a very um, comfortable conversation with everyone. Um, I'd also like to remind everyone that um, we do, we are selling t-shirts in honor of RISE. Proceeds from those t-shirts sold by Totally UTs goes to the Equity Through Education Scholarship for Elizabethtown Community and Technical College. Um, that scholarship will help to send at least three to four um, minorities back to school at uh, ECTC. So um, we will have information on how you can purchase those shirts also at the end. Um, now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our very esteemed panelists. And after I introduce my panelists, I'll turn it over to our moderator for this evening, Ms. Tanya Seabrooks. First, I'd like to introduce Ms. Tanika Bryant. Tanika Bryant founded Black by Black Lou, a local movement to support Black-owned businesses in an effort to generate the dollar in the Black community and create economic sustainability in 2019. Since its birth, the movement has now garnered over 31,000 members to include by Black Lou, by Black Lexington, and by Black Hardin County. Additionally, she has created a national Black business directory, the Black Business App, which features over 300 Black-owned businesses, and it is growing. Recently, she has added founder and executive director to her many hats as she leads the charge in helping Black-owned businesses to plan, launch, and grow their businesses through the 501c3 nonprofit organization, Black Business Association. Tanika is a community influencer leading the charge in ensuring representation and inclusion for Black-owned businesses in Kentucky and beyond. Tanika, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Next, I'd like to introduce Ms. Latanya Gentry. Ms. Gentry is the owner of Gentle Touch Consignment Boutique located in Radcliffe, Kentucky. She is originally from Newport News, Virginia. She served in the United States Army for 12 years as a human resource specialist, 42A. She still serves the Army, but in the civilian capacity as a human resource specialist for the United States Army Human Resource Command, Fort Knox. She has a bachelor's and a master's degree in human resource leadership. LaTanya is married to Tim Gentry. She is a mother of five children and a grandmother of four grandchildren. She loves to laugh. She loves to serve in church. She loves to sing and she loves providing the community and the world with stylish clothing, shoes, and accessories for an affordable price. Please help me welcome to the panel, Ms. LaTanya Gentry. And last but not least, you're welcome. Last but not least, I'd like to introduce Mr. Robert Coffey. Mr. Coffey is the Acting District Director for the Small Business Development Administration in the Kentucky District Office. He joined the SBA in 1998. Prior to this, he was employed by companies including BATUS Incorporated, National City Bank, Providian, and Vincor. He currently serves as the Acting District Director, lead official in the SBA for the state of Kentucky. His promotion to District Director will become effective August 16, 2020. Well, congratulations. He is also the SBA Project Officer for the Kentucky Small Business Development Center Network. Robert is a, a native of Louisville and has a bachelor's degree from the University of Louisville with a major in accountancy. Thank you for being with us as well, Dr. Robert Coffey, and congratulations on your recent, well, you're not recent promotion, but in 10 days, your promotion. <laughs> Thank you. And now I'll go and kick it over to the moderator for the evening, Ms. Tanya Seabrooks. 
Good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to be with you all again for our next, our session of RISE as we focus on Black business and bringing awareness to uh, what we do and how do, how do we support and what are some things that we can do as a community to make our Black business owners uh, more, more viable, to bring more exposure, and also to figure out how we all can work conducively in this thing called America. So I'm excited to talk to each and every panel. And just a reminder to all the, the viewers, as uh, Jerisa had so eloquently placed, please make sure you have your questions and answers because we want to figure out how to make things better, not how to make things worse. We want to, this is a community conversation with action. So as we go ahead and start, um, uh, well, we already know COVID-19 has been a whirlwind. So I'm sure we've all learned a lot and did a lot, but I wanna go ahead and start, and I'm gonna start with um, Dr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Coffey to talk about some of the things that you've seen in COVID-19 as it pertains to some of the businesses of minority, uh, primarily as we talked about the PPP loans and um, the payment protection loans out there and the EIDL loans to help uh, business owners. What were some of the findings um, of all the minority businesses that you had worked with to showcase like really where we are as it pertains to um, some help during COVID-19 because everyone didn't <coughs> or was not able to participate. So could you talk to us a little bit about that, Mr. Coffey? Yes. Um, so as you know, everything changed in March. Um, all the plans we had were suddenly um, brought to a halt, not only in terms of uh, professional, but also personal. Uh, for a lot of business owners, they're one of the same. But there is some things that we saw that came as a result of uh, the pandemic. And a couple of things I want to share. The average Black-owned business has less than 10 days of working capital at, at any point. And so, as you know, working capital is a key measure of how a business continues to operate. It's the cash that they have to, to pay their bills, the current bills. So when you say that an average of 10 days or less, that, that's less than two weeks, which means that in two weeks time, a lot of these businesses are, are going to close. And sadly, a lot of businesses have had to close in the, in the, uh, because of not having sufficient working capital. So we did a survey and, and actually asked businesses how they fared um, and what played a role in perhaps their response to the pandemic in terms of their business. And sadly, a lot of businesses that we surveyed didn't even know what working capital was. Mm. So, so they couldn't. So when I asked what's the definition, they could not define what working capital is. So th that's a problem. Uh, the fact that they don't know this key measure of the short term viability of a business is something that you would know daily. What is my cash position? That's something that's essential to know in operating a business. So, so we found that uh, a lot of businesses are following the national trend of not having enough working capital. So we're looking at ways to address that internally. Now, one of the things that we've looked at is finding banks that are willing to lend to Black-owned businesses because uh, sometimes it's an issue of not being a uh, finding access to capital. So, so they're going to the banks, but the banks aren't lending uh, to the businesses. So, so we're trying to look at ways to address that. Uh, so that, that's was sort of a general uh, finding. Now, when it comes to these two specific loan programs, uh, I'll just kind of, and you've probably heard so much about them, but I'll just give you the quick rundown of why, what, what they did and why it was important. So first, the Paycheck Protection Program, it was a, it basically provided eight weeks of salary for your business. And if you're self-employed, for you uh, to get through this, this uh, time, which because originally we didn't know how long it was going to last. So eight weeks was decided, hey, about two months, this thing will be over, we'll be back to normal. So if we give them eight weeks, then it's going to be great. We know that didn't work out that way, but nonetheless, provided eight weeks of payroll and monies to pay for other overhead expenses like utilities, lease payments, and so forth. Now, after that eight-week period, if you maintain the criteria, 
then you go through the process of documenting that, showing it to your bank, and then that loan is going to be forgiven. So what that means is that you would have gotten eight weeks of salary, payroll for your employees or yourself uh, for nothing. And the purpose of this program was to keep people uh, employed, you keep your benefits going, you stay on the payroll. Uh, so the issues with that was this extra $600 that came with unemployment insurance. So in essence, a lot of people were saying, hey, this is an extra $24 a month that I could make by not working. And so a lot of companies didn't take advantage of it uh, because their employees wasn't coming back to work. Um, or if they did come back to work, if you force them to go back to work, I don't know if you want that employee around your business when you're forcing them to come back to make a lot less money than they would if they stayed home. So a lot of businesses just kind of decided we, we just won't bother that. Um, but for the ones who did, if you're, if you're just your own employer, because this program was expanded to uh, independent contractors, to nonprofits, to religious organizations, to sole proprietors. And so the net was cast wide for businesses. So a lot of black owned businesses are that business that has zero employees. In other words, it's just the owner. And so, so they could have took advantage of this opportunity to have this eight weeks worth of uh, funding at no cost. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so that's how the PPP was set up. Now, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, this is an SBA direct loan that they applied for online. With this loan, originally it came with the $10,000 advance, which meant that the way it was structured, if you got the loan or it didn't get the loan, didn't matter, you got the $10,000. Now, quickly that money was running out, so they changed it to $1,000 per employee up to the maximum of 10. Talk is in Congress now to go back and pay those businesses the rest of that $10,000 as Congress intended. Uh, so how that goes, we'll wait and see. But my point is this, if black owned businesses did not apply for this loan, they, they lost $1,000 per employee now, because this was a grant, Again, whether you got the loan or not, you got the advance. And then if they go back and pay the businesses the rest, then that's $10,000 working capital that could have been added to these businesses. And so, so our frustration is the fact that a lot of businesses did not apply for this assistance for whatever reason. And so, so there's opportunities here for businesses to have walked away from tens of thousands of dollars in, in economic grants and opportunity uh, because they didn't apply for whatever reason. And mm. so, so we're looking at that. Now we're looking at some of the reasons why they are being denied. Some have credit issues. Some had uh, past due government debt that allowed them not to qualify. So there are some reasons why some didn't qualify, but a lot of businesses simply did not apply. Um, whether they knew that was the case or not, I can't say, but we're looking at how to get businesses to a point to where they would qualify for these type of, of loans in the future. Now, one of the other factors of why these businesses uh, didn't qualify, because they're in the shadow, so to speak, uh, or it's more like, you know, it's more like a hustle than a business. So they, they're actually doing things, generating income but none of that is any way reported to any kind of uh, federal or state or local taxing institution. So what that means is that when these things come up and you're asked to provide proof of income, well, guess what? You don't have any proof of income because your way of collecting income was cash, you know, and so, so you, because you didn't want to report it. So that, cost businesses because they still were affected by the pandemic, but it's just mm -hmm. they didn't document that they were affected. And so thereby they couldn't qualify for any of the funding. So, so, so we're wanting to bring these businesses out of the shadows. And one of the things I've found is that if you understand accounting, if you understand what your product or service actually costs, then you can include your taxes in your amount you charge your customers. 
so that you don't actually lose money by paying your taxes at the end of the year. But what that does is make your business legitimate so that when you then do need financing or to apply for some of these programs, well, now you're eligible. Okay. Uh, and I want to um, thank you, Mr. Coffey, for uh, breaking down a lot of those barriers that we saw with, as it pertains to uh, COVID-19. Um, I would also like to hear from uh, Ms. Tanika, you know, with Buy Black Louisville, Buy Black Hard, and Buy Black Lex, what were some of the, the trends that you saw? Because I mean, it sounds to me, it, it appears that we don't know what we don't know. So how did, how did that, that message, how did that translate over into um, the different groups? Because you have several followers and whether they're um, hobbyists or are they actual, actual business owners, what were some of the ways that you were able to do that as well? Ms. Tanika? Um, hey, everybody. I think um, Robert broke it down perfectly with, um, you know, what he was saying. When, um, you know, all the information came out for people to begin to apply, um, you know, for the assistance, um, it was just a plethora of reasons of why they didn't or, you know, they did and they weren't able to receive the funds. And um, one thing that I wanted to add on was um, because, you know, he pretty much broke down almost all the reasons, you know, that everybody was saying it, you know, inside of the group, because that was one, one question that we asked um, during that time. Um, after finding out that a lot of people um, weren't receiving funds or, you know, they weren't um, applying. So the question was, you know, what's going on? You know, how come you guys aren't out there trying to get this money, you know? And it was like, um, you know, as he said, a lot of them um, sometimes are more of a hustle, you know? So instead mm -hmm. of, you know, having a, an actual legal entity um, set up. So that was the issue. Um, credit it was another issue and not having um, banking relationships and, you know, just a, um, uh, it was just a plethora of reasons. And another one that he didn't touch on, which was big, was um, a lot of people, especially with the first round, they just got frustrated because, you know, it was a lot and it was difficult. They didn't understand the language or, you know, the paperwork or, you know, what was needed. So, you know, that was another issue that a, a lot of people had um, in the first round, because I believe on this, um, the second round, they tried to kind of make it a little bit easier for people. But that was a really big thing. A lot of them, they just didn't understand. You know, they didn't understand how to do the paperwork. They didn't understand, you know, uh, the the language, um, you know, inside of trying to apply. Okay. Uh, Miss Latanya Gentry, you, you there with us still, hon? Yes, yes, I'm here. So yes, as, a, as a business owner who is thriving uh, even, even now, um, well, she said, well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, uh, but someone who is, is definitely still on the front line, who, who was able to keep their business open during COVID-19, what was your experience as an actual business owner uh, based on what you've heard from Mr. Coffey and from Tanika? Because I don't know if that was something that you looked into, but did you find that uh, resources were available? Did you find that people were able to offer you, you know, help? Did, did you find your bank to be something suitable for you to go to and talk to and get your questions answered. What was your experience as an actual business owner? Um, well, first of all, I want to say I appreciate the information that Mr. Coffey and Tanika gave um, so far. It, it helped me to understand what was going on at that time. Because at that time, when, when everything was being offered, I, I honestly was very uh, speculative of what they were saying and um like tanika said i was one of the ones who really didn't understand all of what was going on and i also was just a, a, a just to be honest just a tad bit fearful of well, what if all the what ifs okay what if i apply and um you know are they going to check my credit i don't have no credit as far as the, my business is concerned because i i've never did like a business loan or anything like that so those were kind of things that was going on in my mind so i kind of was like well i'm gonna have to figure now figure out what to do for myself and um by the grace of god because of the lord i was able to you know get 
get a gig, I guess you could say, and, and go with it. And that's what kind of kept me afloat um, during those months. Uh, the things that I was doing in my store just kept me afloat during those months. Now, um, of, I am a part of that by Black Harden County, so and um, I was a part of. I am also a part of another group um, of consigners because I'm a consign consignment boutique. So I'm, you know, I'm part of the a consignment group on Facebook, and I would see, I really feel like the fear in some of the comments that were being made in those groups about from those who were who had actually applied. Uh, for Phones, you know, the wait, the wait, the wait. Oh my gosh, I applied in March and it is June. I've got nothing. My employees, they're collecting, like Mr. Coffee said, my employees are collecting this money. They're not going to want to come back. What, for eight weeks of pay? No. And you know, that I was kind of like, well, and, but I don't really, it's just me and my daughter, she's not employed. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, so I, that, I was thankful that that was something I didn't have to worry about. And I, I felt like even though I did, not re, I did not take advantage of those resources, I felt like I was still in a good place. Now, fast forward, um, I have a friend who's, uh, she prepares taxes and she texts me one day and say, hey, they're still offering this. I think that, that was probably about the second round, like maybe what you was talking about, Mr. Coffee, the second round. And so she was like, you should apply. You need to apply. Because in my mind, I was never going to apply because um, one of the fears that I had was, okay, I apply. Let's say I do get it. Okay, they say they're going to forgive me, but will they really, will they really forgive me? Will, or will I see this taxes next year will they say oh you took that loan yeah we forgave you but now we're going to tack it on to your taxes next year that that was just my fault and so but she convinced me i did apply i can't i think that was probably the end of june i have not heard anything i'm not sweating it i'm not stressing because i'm still in business thank the lord <laughs> but um with that, I have seen, just in that little group I was telling you all about, I have seen where uh, other businesses that have been in business for years have closed their doors. Um, I guess because of that working capital that you were mentioning, Mr. Coffee, um, they had to close, they, they, they just had to come to the conclusion, we're gonna have to shut our doors, like 15, 20 years in business, but they had to close due to COVID and not having the, um, the proper, you know, the finances or whatever that was needed, the working capital. <laughs> now I know because I didn't know, but uh, that, um, that that they they didn't have that what they needed to um, continue on. So um, uh, yeah, that yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, did I did I answer the question? I'm not sure. You I, did answer the question. I'm Thank rambling you. on. I'm sorry, but um, no, you're fine. Um, I think the one thing that I'm hearing from between Mr. Coffee, Tanika, and you, LaTanya, is there's some stigmas that need to be broken as it pertains to when something is serious um, that's happening in business. You know, if you hear the word free, that means, okay, yeah, we, I can go with that. But there's also a word called fear that stops maybe some people in minority businesses because I listened to Tanika talk about some of the conversations that were being held inside the chat from Bob Black Lou or Harden or, you know, Lex. I mean, people were, it became fearful. The pandemic is, okay, we give it, we give it that. Okay, pandemic was just one of those one-offs. We were, nobody ever prepared for this. But in terms of how we're trying to survive in the midst of it all, um, what are some of the triumphs that you've seen in the midst of this? Uh, and we'll start with you, uh, Latanya, and take about a minute, you know, what are some of the triumphs that you've seen in the midst of the pandemic of, what's been happening in your business and we'll go around to each of you to answer that what are some of the triumphs that you've seen in some of the small business of of color um that people will continue to support regardless uh that i only speak for myself um that people your customers they will still they will still support you um you put it out there what you need or what you're looking for and they'll come around the loyalty is there um yeah, that that's a triumph that I can say for myself is that uh, my 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 customers and clients they were they were there for me to help me make it through. 
That's good. That's good. Um, Tanika, what has been some of your successes that you've seen in Buy Black, Harden, Lou, Lex, North Carolina? You got all of them. Girl, all over the world. <laughs> um, I think one, um, like uh, Latanya said, was that, um, you know, just in the midst of the pandemic and the craziness, you started to see a lot more um, unity. You know, you started to see a lot more people um, come together and say, okay, listen, you know, these businesses are struggling, you know, especially our restaurants, you know, and um, retail and different things like that. They're struggling. So, you know, we need to take it upon ourselves to kind of step our game up a little bit. So, you know, it kind of inspired a lot of people and motivated a lot of people to, um, you know, become more proactive and get involved to where they were like, hey, you know, who has um, gift cards or, you know, is this some kind of way, you know, we can um, purchase something now, you know, just to have some money in your pocket and then, you know, redeem later. So um, I definitely agree with her. The triumph was definitely the community um, coming together and supporting. Oh, okay, great. Oh. Mr. Coffee, Mr. Robert Coffee. Yes. What were some of the um, things that you've seen? I know being with the Small Business Development Center, you saw some of everything from the highs and lows. What were some of the triumphs that you saw in the midst of this as it pertains to minority-owned business? So one of the things, I guess the overwhelming, one of the themes I saw is resiliency. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a, a, a group of individuals who had a history of having to overcome obstacles. Uh, and not just in business, but in other areas in life. So, so the the resiliency I saw was evident uh, in these businesses. How that, although these are tough times, they weren't prepared, but they're still ready to go out and get it. And so they're ready to take on the, the fight. Um, one of the things that's humbling is when you get a phone call from someone that you've talked to, you've worked with, and they said, well, thank you. We did get our money and it helped. We're gonna be okay now. Um, so so that that is, is a very humbling experience, but highlights the fact that uh, although our numbers are lower in terms of participation in these programs, it is reaching some of these businesses and it is being used and very helpful. So, so that, that's very humbling on my part to to help me help understand how important it is that we continue to help uh, these businesses access these programs because it, it means it means a lot to them. It's their livelihood. Good deal. Thank you. Um, and just you know, as we're going into, I'm going to go over a little bit into resources, and I'm actually going to start with you, Mr. Coffee, just on a one minute about the resources that are actually out there that we may not know. And it could be anything from women owned business to minority owned business. There are several resources out there, but again, we're still highlighting, we don't know what we don't know. So from your perspective, you know, in less than a minute, if you could get it all in in a minute, what are some of the resources that are, that are out there to better propel and prepare uh, minority businesses as they go along, the ones who are in business versus hobby? Yeah. I think you're on mute. That's right. I think. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So don't start the clock. Start don't don't start the clock yet. Okay, yeah. so we clock we we take it now. <laughs> All right. So um there are lots of resources. I'll just name them and then highlight specific ones for the area. So we have the okay. in our office, the small business administration, you have us. We have the small business development center network. We have SCORE, we have the Women's Business Center, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, and one of the ones that not too many people know is the Kentucky Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Now, being in Hardin County, that means you all have a close proximity to Fort Knox. There's a lot of activity there for businesses to work for the federal government, the government contracting. So our contracting programs through SBA will help you access those federal markets. The PTAC, the, the Procurement Technical Assistance Center, is that resource that helps you to put all that together so that you can compete and win these government awards. And so for this area, focus on government contracting because you're so close. 
There's no reason why Kentucky businesses are not getting their fair share. There's definitely no reason why black owned businesses aren't getting the opportunities that are set aside for them with our certifications. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Tanika? Buy Black Lou is the resource. <laughs> buy, Black, <laughs> buy Black Harden, buy Black Lex, buy Black Lou. Listen, if you in there, you in there. You already know. So, you know, in addition to um, all of the resources, um, you know, that Mr. Coffee said, buy Black is definitely an awesome resource for um, our black owned businesses to advertise and market and, you know, kind of get their business out there. We did a, um, a market research um, study in the group, you know, to kind of find out what some of the barriers were that they were facing. And uh, the number two barrier was lack of advertisement opportunities, lack of representation. So, you know, um, that's one thing that we pride ourselves on with the um, with the Buy Black movement, you know. When it comes to advertising, as far as that part of, you know, being a resource, we got you through um, the group. If it's not through the group, um, which, you know, depending on which one, there's thousands of members, um, you know, in, in the groups um, collectively, hundreds, I think Harden, maybe over 400 400 and something pushing 500 uh, members. So with the group and with the app, you know, when it comes to that barrier, um, we're definitely a, a great resource for, for our black owned businesses. Awesome, awesome. Miss Lasagna, has there been some resources that you would like to go ahead and shout out? I know you mentioned that you belong to a consignment uh, chat group and with Black, with Black, black Harden. Um, yes. Are there other resources that you found as well? Wow, um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, I know you're an avid learner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I try to stay on, stay on, stay up on it. Um, but uh, just being a part of groups such as by Black, Hardin County by Black, I think I'm a part of uh, by Black Louisville as well. And so that has all um, afforded me, you know, some marketing um, strategies uh, just to see how other people do do their businesses or whatever. You know, it has helped me to come up with different innovative, you know, ideas on how to market my own business and just, um, or even how to, um, to run my business. Uh, I've gotten many ideas just from, you know, going into groups such as that, such as Bad Black. Uh, many ideas have come from visiting other groups and just kind of putting things together, um, you know, from, to, you know, suit what I do. Um, now I did know about, I do know about the SBA, uh, I do know about that. And, um, our own um, RSBA Radcliffe, I said our yeah our, our RSBA that that they were helpful as well with information that they you know from time to time. So um, yeah, yeah. Good deal. Well, I love to hear it. I love to hear it. Now, how important? And this is a question for all three of you all. Um, how important do you feel the mentorship would be at, at this juncture? Whether you've been in business for. 15 years, five years, 10 years, how important do you, um, do you value the mentorship? And do you feel like there's enough mentorship available out there for people to take advantage of, of the different mentorship programs? I know like LaTanya, as a business owner, you found some, some groups that you all can, you know, bounce things off of. And I know with Buy Black Louisville, Buy Black Harden, there's several different things for mentorship. And then also from Dr. Uh, Mr. Coffee's perspective, but how, if, how valuable do you all deem that mentorship as being a cornerstone of your business? Like, is it, ex is it really that important that you think that for the success of what you're doing? We'll go with you, LaTanya. Okay, <laughs> I was waiting. I do. I think it's very important to have some sort of mentorship as a um, business owner, and especially as a black business owner, because you know I hate to say it, but as a black business owner, we might not have the advantages as our you know counterparts. So um, you know, to be as a business owner, we all want to be successful. So if somebody has done it, you know. The that looks like me, you know, definitely, definitely I want to hear from you. You know, we might not even be in the same line of business, but you you got there. And so, yes, I definitely want to talk with you to, you know, to see what could be 
uh, down my path, you know, what, what can I avoid? You know, do I, do I turn left or do I turn right? You know, I want to know, you know, if you're there, I, want, I definitely would want to talk to you about how I can get to where you're going or where you're at. And then I would do the same. You know, I, I see somebody coming along. I got plenty of friends who are wanting to start their own business. And where I'm at, you know, I try to give them what I already have, you know, as far as helping them get up. And so, yeah, I, that mentorship is uh, it's really big. I, I if Anybody listening, <laughs> I will accept your mentorship. <laughs> the mentorship, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Latanya. Uh, Tanika? Uh, yes, mentorship is um, critical. You know, it's crucial. A lot of, um, you know, Black entrepreneurs and business owners don't have the luxury of having that knowledge share. You know, um, you know, in our community, we don't have um, a lot of generational, you know, wealth. So, um, you know, which is something that we're working on, but, you know, we don't have a lot of generational wealth. So, you know, a lot of people, they can't turn to, you know, their um, parents or, you know, somebody close to them to that, you know, as they were growing up to have those business uh, principles instilled um, inside of them. So, you know, it's extremely important to have mentors and people to help you, to help you to kind of develop, you know, the skill, the knowledge, the tools necessary to be successful um, in business. And, you know, also it helps you to possibly avoid some pitfalls, you know, because, of course, you have somebody that you can bounce ideas off of and, you know, you can listen to where they've been and, you know, how they've done things. And even though it might not be um, your path or, you know, your journey might be a little bit different, but it can still kind of give you a blueprint, you know, a template of how to do things or, you know, some things to avoid or, you know, it, it, it mentorship is um, extremely important in um, being a business owner. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Coffey? Yes, I, I agree. Um, it's one of the best tools available is to find someone who can help you uh, get to where you need to go. The issue a lot of times comes down to trust, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you're in the same line of work, same industry. Uh, for far too long, historically, the thought has been, if I help you, I'm hurting myself. Oh, yes. So, so I'm going to hold back on helping you because that will impact me because there's only room for one of us. So that mindset has to change to understand that there are plenty of opportunities for everyone so you will not be hurting yourself by helping another business. Now, especially in the black community. So what I've done is try to help businesses reach out to businesses in other parts of the state or even other parts of the country. So that if that feeling is there, then I know my long term business won't be impacted by you in California. So you can help <laughs> me because you're not going to move to Kentucky to take my business. So, so I try to help businesses find someone that they can still talk to because that, that uh, you know, the trust, is, it takes a while for us to build that. But once we do build that trust, then, then mentorship is an excellent way. It, it's, you're buying, you're just cutting yourself out of time. You don't have to spend the time to make the mistakes. You can skip that. Mm -hmm. you skip all that and go straight to make this decision and this will help your business grow. You don't have to learn. You don't have to touch the stove. Someone else has already done it. They will tell you, don't touch the stove. So once we get the trust, then we should, we'll be okay. It's just that it's been institutionalized, it's been ingrained, so there's a lot of distrust. And so we just have to work at uh, developing the trust and to understand that if I help you, then it, it helps me also. It doesn't hurt. That's awesome. And I like what you said about the um, breaking down the, the, the mindset. It all comes down to the mindset that, you know, competition is not there it's, it's more so let's work together to kind of make some things happen opposed to thinking hey if i got lawn care business you have a lawn care business you're gonna take my business <laughs> but uh and then that is so true and i also like the uh what you said tanika when it comes to the generational wealth 
piece because there's there's conversations that we have to have that we if for some reason we are at a disadvantage and it goes back to what i said in the beginning you don't know what you don't know um and even with latonya would mentioning about how important it has been for her business dealing with the mentor now in hardin county for example um i want to talk to you uh start with you mr coffee now you mentioned SCORE, you mentioned the, w, um, the Women Business um, Center, you mentioned the Veterans Business Center, um, and then the KYPD, PTG, I believe? PTAC. PTAC, yeah, I had all kinds of letters. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you mentioned SCORE, and if I understand correctly, when it comes to SCORE, that is a dynamic program that you all have in Louisville. Uh, is there ways for some of the mentors to maybe come down to Hardin County to do mentorship with the SBDC that we have here locally? So they actually, um, the SBDC and SCORE do almost the same thing. And so, um, in fact, in Louisville, they work together. They do a lot of mm -hmm. presentations. And so they kind of overlap in terms of the services offered. Um, okay there for them to some are able to travel but a lot of them are older okay uh, so so they're not as mobile um but they do offer what they call cyber counseling which is either you know i would imagine it's been over the phone for years but now they may have introduced uh zoom or something into that uh to their cyber counseling so that could be an opportunity uh to talk with one of the, the score representatives I, I think they're 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 my my thinking is that they weed out the tire kickers, you know, the ones who say, I want to start a business, but they, they tell you what it's going to be. And, and it's not to scare you, but to give you the reality of like, do you really want to do this? And when you just say, yeah, I still want to do this. Then the small business development center helps you get that plan formalized, get financing, get your business off and running. Okay. Well, thank you for that information. I appreciate that. Uh, Tanika, talk to me about some of the mentorship that you've been able to uh, triumphs that you've been able to get accomplished with by Black uh, Harden and Lou and Lex. By Black. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, right? All um, of them. Well, you know, we had a, a trial mentorship program um, to just pretty much kind of see how, you know, it was going to work and see if it was something that our members would be interested in. And, you know, surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly, you know, it went off really well. We had um, a lot of people to sign up to that wanted to mentor, um, you know, that were seasoned entrepreneurs and business owners that wanted to mentor um, others and offer their skills um, set. And then we had a lot of people to sign up that were looking for mentors, you know, in specific, in their specific field and all that. So, you know, it was really good. We just did a trial run to kind of see how it would work. So um, we're not doing the mentorship right now because, um, you know, we're going to step back and then develop, you know, a really good plan, you know, um, take it from trial run to, you know, um, all the way to the top, baby. So, you know, the um, mentorship, yeah, that, that, that should be, um, that should be coming off soon. Okay. Uh, it looks like we're starting the questions come through. Um, and one of the questions that, um, that I just saw is uh, what made, Tanika, this is actually to you, ask, uh, you know, what made you start by Black? Why was that important? You know, I started it because I saw some, I, I started seeing some information um, about how the dollar generates in the Black community, right? I think it was um, like the dollar generates in, you know, the, you know, the white community, this community, that community for up to a month but it only generates in the black community for six hours, you know? So I was like, well, hold on, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I, 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 I had went out shopping and, you know, spent all these hundreds of dollars and I came back, you know, how you have buyer's remorse trying to see what you done, what you done 
bought and I'm looking and I'm like, well, man, you know, I'm going to spend all these hundreds, hundreds of dollars, you know, and not one dollar that I spend in the black community. So from there, you know, I decided that it had to be an intentional thing. You know what I mean? Like you, if you want to support small businesses or, you know, um, women owned business or, you know, anything, it has to be intentional if it's not instilled in you, you know, if you're not, you know, bought up to, you know, have that pattern. So I said, let me start this group and, you know, let people know where I'm going and what I'm seeing. And, you know, let's talk about these statistics and how, you know, supporting these black owned businesses could generate wealth for the community and create jobs and all these wonderful things. And, you know, to my surprise, it went from a hundred to a thousand to 10,000 and, you know, now over um, 31,000. Wow. Wow. Well, okay. okay. Now let me ask this question, um, because this also came, this also was pertaining to you. And I'm it's actually all three. Well, I, oh, let me see. Yeah, it looks to all three of you on this I'm one. Popular. Um, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> well, we're gonna start with you about a minute. How do you recommend business uh, business owners or aspiring entrepreneurs to find mentors? that's in their field what would what would be your suggestion to them if they're looking um you know i would just check out the resources that's available um you know start in your in your circle first is what i would do you know i would start um you know asking some of my trusted friends and family um you know who do you know or see if there's anybody that's close to you that's in that field and then you know also branch out to check out like the small business development center you know like this is what they do you know by black lou we have uh, so many people in there you know that's willing and ready you know you just kind of have to expand your network so just step out of the box some um, you know um call the, the uh, small business development center jump into um by black lou or jump into some of these other groups and you know just mention it ask people you know have you had a mentor before? How did you find your mentor? Or, you know, do you know of any mentorship groups? So it's just really a matter of just stepping out and, you know, networking and letting it be known what it is that you're looking for and, you know, be receptive to it. Okay, thanks, Tanika. Latanya? I would agree with uh, everything Tanika said, just stepping out of your comfort zone and just kind of like uh, whatever your line of business is, go find somebody that's already done it. You know, I know Mr. Coffey mentioned that, you know, sometimes you might feel like, well, they might think I'm trying to take their, you know, I'm their competition, but you're gonna have to, you know, put that out of your mind. Um, if you're trying to get up and uh, get up and running, you're going to have to just forget about the whole competition thing. And what I know is there's plenty for everybody because what I'm selling, that person might not be selling. We all have something different about our businesses, regardless of whether it are in the same line or not. So I would say just go find somebody um, that's in your same line of business and just go talk to them. I, I, I had to do that. It was, it was a little scary, you know, but I did go talk to a few consignment, uh, you know, um, shop owners. And like the, I told you before, I joined some groups and you know, made some phone calls and just, you know, kind of was perusing through people's websites and things like that just to get information and just to see you know, kind of what, what I want my right to look like or what I want my business to look like or be how I want my business to be appealing. Um, and just like uh, Tanika said, find a trusted friend. I did have a, um, in the beginning, I had a trusted friend, mentor, and then I joined another group <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that helped me out tremendously um, with the mentorship. And then I was offered uh, um, an opportunity to be a part of this awesome academy, Entrepreneurship Academy, which was uh, delightful because we had so many different speakers, um, you know, that came in to espound on different things like taxes and things like that. Somebody like me, I had no idea about, you know, taxes and business. I'm like, what? We got to pay taxes? Wait, I just want to sell stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you just want to, just, just like to say, just get out, step out of the box, get out of your comfort zone, because if not, you're probably going to be stuck with that business idea. That's what it's going to be, an idea and not a reality. Okay, awesome. Well, um, I got another question, and I think this one is to 
uh, Mr. Coffey directly. Uh, Mr. Coffey, do you anticipate another round of PPP, PPE, well, is it PPE money? It's, it's certainly, well, it's PPE, that's, that's the equipment. We used to saying, we, you hear it all on the news, you hear PPP and PPE, or are you down with OPP, you know. <laughs> so, so, um, so yeah, it's PPP, and I, we don't know, honestly, how that's going to turn out. Um, but, but on the mentoring thing, uh, my thought is there is to, for me to find a mentor, I want to find somebody that's where I want to be. Um, mm -hmm. so if I'm in, if, if I'm in a certain industry, then, then I'm going to start at the top and then work my well, you know, down to whoever I talk to. Me. But, but if I, if I'm in, in retail, then I'm going to go to Macy's or I'm going to go to this place or that place. Hey, because this is how I see a successful business being run. How do you do it? Uh, to be successful, you have to do the same things that they do. Um, mm -hmm. Like, uh, you're like if you're if you're selling something then you have to look at those who are doing that on a larger scale and, mm -hmm. and then find out how to tailor that to what you need so so those people are most willing to talk to you because you are not a threat to them and so, okay. so they're very willing to share because they they really have nothing to fear by telling you how they operate um anyway but yeah. well i know i think that was that's a good one that's a good way to look at it and I believe we're coming down to our final question, unless we got some more uh, in attendees, you got a few more minutes. Um, how can educators connect with them in order, entrepreneurs in order to create co-op opportunities for students as it pertains to entrepreneurship? Because we know that's where the millennials are going. That's where students are just really going. So, um, and we're going to start with you, uh, Mr. Coffey. How, how can educators connect with um, entrepreneurs to create co-op opportunities for our students? Because we have some high schoolers that's ready to take the bull by the reins. Yeah, so, and, and I used to do a lot of junior achievement because I feel you've got to start earlier than that. you got to start having entrepreneurship as an idea in the minds of uh, when you're very young instead of the idea of going and work for somebody. Um, so educators, though, play an important role in bringing in entrepreneurs into the educational setting to show uh, students, this is what entrepreneurship looks like. This is why this is a successful option for you in, in considering uh, what you're going to do career-wise uh, after high school or even after, after college. Um, and so I, I think they really should highlight uh, entrepreneurship and use it every, every chance they get to introduce entrepreneurs to uh, students so that they can understand what happens in that world. And we, we did a lot of that with Bellarmine University. Uh, they wanted to come every year and talk to the students about entrepreneurship. So we were part of that, you know, the curriculum so that either business school students are focused not only on learning, but hey, how can I start a business uh, once I finish my college education. So, so I think educators can highlight entrepreneurship by uh, bringing those resources into the, into the class setting and then hopefully would inspire the young ones to do what they need to do. Thank you, Mr. Coffey. Uh, Tanika. Uh, for us, just reach out. Just reach out. Um, we've done it before. Um, I think our group is a great connector of people. So, um, you know, generally when I'm asked those questions, we actually um, was in talks with uh, U of L for something similar. You know, they have a, um, I think it's a um, minority um, business group. Um, for uh, whatever, but a minority business group. And, you know, we were talking about that as well. Um, you know, having them being able to have the opportunity to connect with, um, you know, business owners, successful business owners in the community and especially successful um, business owners in the community that look like them, you know, which is extremely important, you know, um, 
when you know your um, a black business or minority um, business. It's important to see somebody that looks like you that's doing what you want to do and doing it successfully, right? So for us, you know, like I said, we are a great connector of people. We have a lot of uh, members. We got the hookup. So um, for us, just you know, text or I'm sorry, um, inbox or you know, send us a message on. Facebook or however, and we'll, you know, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I have, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Latanya? Um, what do you think? What Tanika said, everything that she just said. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with the coffee, I agree with both um, in, the, in that I think that um, it would be great to have entrepreneurs come to the schools of entrepreneurs of, in, of, in every capacity, you know, like somebody that's just beginning and somebody that's reached it the top, what they, what they consider the top, that's very successful to come out to the schools and talk to the youth. Um, and like Tanika said, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you just reach out, you can inbox me or however you would like to do it. Um, I'm, I'm up for it. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all. Um, I just had a, one more question to come through and it is um, for Miss Tanika. What exactly does Buy Black Lou do not do? What is, uh, is there anything particularly that you don't do? to set the stage, uh, it's, it seems like it's an awesome group, but they wanna know what is it that you don't do so we don't have people going saying, well, I thought this is what you did. Is there something That was a question for me, and that was actually a compliment to Miss Tanika Bryant. It deserves no <laughs> response. I'm just really proud oh. to have a group uh, in Hardin County and the surrounding area started by a black female that is supporting yes. black businesses. I mean, I'm just all about it. I'm, I'm so glad to meet you and have you on the panel. Thank you so oh, okay. much. I, I appreciate I it. And, and let me just say, if it's something that we don't do and, you know, it's something that the community needs, trust and believe we'll be doing it by next week. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it. Uh -huh. Well, that yes. concludes our question and answer. I want to take this time to thank Mr. Robert Coffey, Ms. Tanika Bryant, Mrs. Latanya Gentry. You all have been all awesome, superbly well done on this panel to bring light to uh, minority business, some of the things that you all have learned over the way. And I, as I said, this pandemic has taught everybody one thing, and that's how to survive, whether you're taking advantage of it or not. But I appreciate all the, the effort that you all are doing to continue to push and promote uh, the betterness of our community, the wellness of our community as it terms to e economy and, and definitely with minority owned business. I would also like to compliment again the, the different resources that you all provide. So there's really no reason why someone couldn't take advantage of anything that you all have said. You know, um, Ms. Gentry, you know, currently as a business owner, you see so many different things and the way that you have reinvented yourself time and time over these last few months has been nothing short of amazing. Blackback, Harden, Lou, Lex, North Carolina, USA, everything you doing, Ms. Bryant. Um, we're very proud of you. Very, very proud. And thank you for saying that. If you don't have it now, by next week you will. I love that. Tenacity, keep it going. Mr. Coffee. Nothing short of amazing. There's a couple of projects that we have coming up this year, which I'm very excited about. Uh, and so I appreciate your willingness to be able to teach more in this area, as well as the rest of the state. Congratulations on your promotion as well. But we will be hitting you up with uh, resources so we can have more women owned, more minority owned, more veteran owned. We're going to do it in Hardin County. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Jerisa Lamont, but once again, I would like to thank you all for allowing me to moderate and hang out with you all this evening. So we're coming to the close of another session of RISE. Thank you. Like, I'll just reiterate what Tanya said. I mean, we had some really great panelists. I think we dug really deep into some of the triumphs and the obstacles that many Black businesses and minority businesses face. Um, and we've given some good resources and information um, to touch on. Um, next week, you can join us. We have a huge panel. Um, it's going to be on women of color in politics and running for office because we all know that policy is the only way that things can change. Um, so we are going to have some great guests with us uh, next week. 
Um, this will be recorded in case you missed it today or you want to send this to your friends. I do have to go out and close with this bit. Like I never would have imagined meeting Mr. Coffee and him mentioning OPP. So I just, I got to give it up for you on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> we can't end the night without addressing that. Um, so, so you can see us next week on another series of Rise. As I mentioned, it is uh, to to do politics, women of color running in politics and how to run for office. Because we've got to stop being scared to approach that office. And um, we're capable. And, and we can do that. And like I said, policy is the only way that we can really see substantial change in our community. So again, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, check the Facebook page. Let's go to Equity Through Education. We will see you next week for our next series of RISE.